substring, prefix, suffix, subsequence. All of these terms come hand in hand when it comes to problems on strings. One such problem is available on lead code where you are given two strings and you have to determine if one of the string is a subsequence of the other one. In this problem statement, the term subsequence is very important. You have to understand what does it actually mean and then proceed with the solution. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will catch some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start with a brute force approach and understand what does a subsequence actually mean. Going forward, we will use a two pointer approach to come up with an efficient solution. And after that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given two strings str1 and str2. And you have to return a true if str1 is a subsequence of str2. So let us try to look at some of the test cases and then understand it better. So looking at our first sample test case, my first string is CDE and the second string is ABCDE. I have to check if this string one is a subsequence of string two. That means, can you find the string one in your string two? You can say that, yes, you are able to find the string CDE in over here, right? So for your first test case, you need to return true as your answer. Similarly, let us look at our second test case. In our second test case, my first string is AXC and the second string is AHBGDC. You can see that you cannot find X anywhere in the second string, right? So naturally, you won't be able to find the string 1 in your string 2, correct? So for your second test case, you need to return false as your answer. Now let us look at the third test case, which is the most generic one. My first string is ABC and the second string is AHBGDC. Once again, you have to determine if the string 1, it is a subsequence of string 2 or not. Now, the term subsequence is very important. In our first test case, you saw the character CDE and they occurred all together, right? But in this string, you have the characters A, B and C. For a subsequence, all of these characters should just exist in the other string in the same order. It is not necessary that they have to be contiguous. So in my second string, I can find the same characters in the same order A, then a B and then a C. So for my third test case also, I will return true as my answer. So this is what this problem actually means. If you now feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out on your own. Otherwise, I want to first focus on what does a subsequence actually mean? Because that is the root cause how you can go about understanding this problem and come up with a better solution. Over here, I have my most generic test case, correct? And you have to determine if the string ABC is a subsequence of the second string, right? Now, before you start to arrive at a solution, you must first understand what is actually a subsequence. So, for example, I have this sample string and I ask you what are subsequences of this string? So, for subsequences, you can generate any string which have characters from the original string in the same order and they should have the same frequency. So, for example, I write down some strings. I have these sample strings with me and we will try to determine which of them are a valid subsequence. So, starting off with the first string, I have the string AH. You can say that you find an AH over here. So, yes, this is a valid subsequence, correct? Moving on to my next string, that is GDC. Once again, you see that GDC is present in my original string and I can say that yes, this is also a valid subsequence. Moving on to my third example, ABG. You can say that you cannot find ABG altogether, correct? But for a valid subsequence, the characters do not have to be contiguous. That means it is not necessary that the characters should be also present together in the actual string. Just the order should be same. So you can see that A appears over here, then you have a B and then you have a G. So this condition satisfies and I can safely say that this is also a valid subsequence. Moving on to my third example, I have the string A, H, H and B, correct? Now, if you look in your original string, you have all the three characters 
and they also appear in the same order correct but the frequency of h is different here you have 2h and here you only have 1h so this will not be a valid subsequence moving on to my third example that is abc once again if you check your string you can find a a then a b and then a c they are in the same order right a b c so i can say that yes this is once again a valid subsequence moving ahead with my third example i have a string b a c so you can see that yes b a and c they are present but the order is different you have b first and in the original string you have a first correct so this will not be a valid subsequence and similarly looking at our last example i have the string a x and h you can see that you cannot find x anywhere in your original string so once again i can safely say that this is not a valid subsequence so by now you must have understood what does a subsequence actually mean it is not necessary that the characters should be contiguous in the original string but they should appear in the same order that is only the prime condition that you have to remember now based upon this idea you can easily come up with a brute force solution a brute force solution would mean that you'd come up with all the different subsequence possible with the second string and then check hey is this equal to string 1 is this equal to string 1 is this equal to string 1 and then eventually you will arrive at a subsequence that is equaling to the original string string 1 right and once you find it you can say that yes this condition should return a true because string 1 is a valid subsequence of string 2 if you generate all the different subsequences and do not find string 1 anywhere then you can return a false so this approach will work and give you a correct answer every time but the only problem with this approach is it will take you a lot of time to generate all the different subsequences of a single string hence this process is not time efficient you need to come up with a solution that can work efficiently even when your string is very very large because right now if the string has a 100 characters you will just waste a lot of time generating all the different subsequences so how can you come up with an efficient approach now that you have understood what does a subsequence actually mean and how does it work you can try to come up with a efficient approach based upon its conditions you know that in a subsequence the order of the characters have to be same right so if you see a a first of all then in your second string also a should appear first right so what we can do is we can try to iterate over both the strings simultaneously that means we will use two pointers correct so i initialize two pointers and right now they are pointing at the first character of both the strings correct now think about it if both these characters are same that means yes this is in the direction of that maybe this is a valid subsequence so you verified that okay one of the character is same so i'm going to move my first pointer to the next location and similarly since you are done with the first character move your second pointer also to the second location once again compare both of these characters you see that they are not the same but it is okay you still have a lot more characters to consider so what i'm just going to do is i will take my pointer and move it to the next location i compare once again b and b are same that's good this looks like a valid subsequence i will move one step ahead for both the pointers once again compare these characters they are not the same so you are going to move the second pointer one step ahead once again compare both of these characters they are the same right so you stop your process and you have iterated both the strings completely if you were able to iterate through all of these characters that means it was a valid subsequence and you can return a true think about it if you had any extra character or any character that did not exist let us say you had a x over here then what would have happened your pointer would have pointed at the character x right and the second pointer would have been after the character b and once again you will compare character by character x and g are not same so you will try to move to the next character that is d that is also not equal to x you will move to c that is also not equal to x and you are done you are finished with your second string but you are not finished with your first string so once again you need to stop over here and in that case you will return false as your answer 
So you can see that with this two pointer approach, you can go character by character and easily determine if the first string is a subsequence of the second string. Now, based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement the solution. And on the right, once again, I have my sample test case that is passed in as an input parameter to the function is subsequence. By the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we initialize two pointers that are pointing at the first character of each of the strings. Correct? And then what we'll do? You will start a while loop that will iterate over each character. And this loop will run until you reach the length of the first string or you reach the length of the second string. And in this loop, you will compare character by character. So at the first instance, you compare if both of these characters are same. Since A and A are same, what do you do? You will increment both of your pointers. So after one iteration, this pointer moves at the second location. And similarly, the other pointer also moves at the second location. This loop will now run again. And once again, you compare both of the characters. You compare B and H, they are not the same. So what do you do? You only increment the second pointer. So what will happen? This pointer moves at the next location and you are going to compare both of these next characters, right? So this loop will keep on running and you are going to iterate through each character. Once this loop ends, either the first pointer would have reached the end of the string or the second pointer would have reached the end of the string. And you know that if the first pointer has reached the end of the string, that means you were able to find each of these characters in the second string in the same order, right? And that means a valid subsequence. So at the very end, what do you do? You just check if i is equal to str1.length. So that means has i reached the very end? If yes, this will return a true, else this will return a false. And this will be your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n, where n is the length of the longer string, because you will have to iterate the second string at least once, correct? And the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. That means a constant space, because you do not use any extra space to arrive at your answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I know that these kind of problems are not very tricky. It's just about how well you are understanding the problem. For example, in this problem, you must clarify that a subsequence is being asked. There could be another variation of the same problem where you are asked for a contiguous substring. In that case, all of the characters have to appear adjacent to each other. So just keep all of these little things in mind and then try to approach the solution. And as you know, this two pointer approach is very common and you will be using it in a lot of problems where you have to compare two strings or you are starting one pointer from the starting location and one of them from the end location. So just keep all of this in mind. And while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other problems which work on the two pointer approach? I bet there are a lot of such problems. Just tell me all of it in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what other problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.